Could there be aliens living on distant planets beyond our solar system? NASA's new James Webb Space Telescope may have found tantalizing clues that have people buzzing about the possibility of life thriving on alien worlds. Imagine an entire planet covered in a deep, global ocean teeming with living organisms, producing an ozone-like gas. A far-out notion, or is it? Astronomers have detected signatures of various unexpected gases in the atmosphere of exoplanet K218b, an alien world 124 light-years away, that seems straight out of science fiction. While this mini-Neptune is definitely not Earth 2.0, some experts say K218b may fit the bill for a watery world capable of supporting extraterrestrial life. But before you call the Galactic Federation of Planets, let's take a reality check on what we actually know about this distant, exotic exoplanet. Could there really be alien sea creatures releasing biosignature gases on K218b? Or is this just a case of some imaginative speculation and media hype? With its powerful infrared gaze, Webb can detect which gases wrap these alien worlds. When an exoplanet passes in front of its parent star, some starlight filters through its atmosphere. By studying the spectral signals, astronomers can infer the chemical composition of that atmosphere. Webb's observations have already revealed stunning details about exoplanets within our galactic neighborhood. But its latest find has generated major buzz in the astronomy community and the public imagination. We're going to explore the facts and misconceptions surrounding the recent observations of exoplanet K218b, made by the game-changing James Webb Space Telescope. Join me as we separate science fiction from science and see if this new find really brings us closer to discovering life beyond Earth. The truth may surprise you. A 33-day orbit around its host star puts the exoplanet in the star's habitable zone, a region where it gets as much starlight as Earth gets from the Sun. This location suggests that there might be conditions where liquid water can exist. In 2019, scientists found that there was water vapor in the atmosphere of K218b, which raised interest in this planet. K218b has been the subject of extensive study as a potential habitable world. However, it's important to note that, apart from its temperature, it bears a closer resemblance to gas giants like Uranus or Neptune rather than Earth. It's hard to find and distinguish atmospheres around distant planets, and this often leads to arguments in the scientific community. In 2021, scientists suggested that the observed water vapor signal might be due to stellar activity rather than the presence of water in the atmosphere of K218b. In 2020, it was proposed that methane could be a more substantial component of the atmosphere, comprising approximately 3 to 10 percent of the atmosphere, while water might make up about 5 to 11 percent. In 2022, scientists said that the evidence of water could actually be methane, but this scenario seems less likely. To better understand the climate of K218b, different climate models have been used, and a comparison of these results is focused on simulating the climates of sub-Neptune planets. In 2021, scientists found that the planet's atmosphere has a weak temperature gradient because of its tidally locked nature. They noticed a wind pattern with descending air on the night side and ascending air on the day side. In the upper atmosphere, radiation absorption induced by methane resulted in the formation of an inversion layer. In 2022, researchers did simulations that considered different rotation rates. Their findings indicated that, except for high rotation rates, there is no substantial temperature gradient between the poles and the equator. The researchers observed the presence of jet streams above the equator and at high latitudes, with weaker equatorial jets closer to the Earth's surface. Researchers conducted simulations in 2021 and concluded that photochemistry should not completely deplete ammonia from the outer atmosphere. The model predicted the formation of carbon oxides and cyanide in the middle atmosphere, which could be detectable component. The model also suggests the formation of a sulfur cloud that could extend through and above the water clouds which could complicate the investigation of the planet's atmosphere. Team member Subhajit Sarkar of Cardiff University explained, 
although this kind of planet does not exist in our solar system. Sub-Neptunes are the most common type of planet known so far in the galaxy. We have obtained the most detailed spectrum of a habitable zone sub-Neptune to date, and this allowed us to work out the molecules that exist in its atmosphere. Let's look at the specifics of this exoplanet and the misconceptions surrounding it. It is larger and heavier than Earth, a characteristic that some mistakenly label as a super-Earth. The evidence indicating that it is surrounded by a liquid water ocean is not conclusively supported by the available data. There are also questions about the presence of dimethyl sulfide in its atmosphere, a compound that is mostly made by biological processes on Earth. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, observed K218b, which provided us valuable information about its atmosphere. However, it is important to note that there is no concrete evidence to classify K218b as a Heisen world because there is no detected water. The potential presence of dimethyl sulfide in the atmosphere is also a matter of debate, and even if it is present, attribution to biological processes is a highly speculative proposition. Interestingly, headlines from various sources, including typically reliable ones, have promoted sensationalized narratives about this exoplanet. To achieve scientific accuracy, let's examine the genuine findings related to exoplanet K218b. The most prevalent class of planets in the galaxy is classified as super-Earths, with a typical mass ranging from 2 to 10 times that of Earth. An example of such a planet is Kepler-452b. But it's important to avoid calling this type of world Earth like in any way, it is more likely that it has a substantial and volatile gas envelope, similar to that of Neptune, or that it has a hot, stripped planetary core similar to that of Mercury. When considering planets with similar physical properties to Earth, a diverse range of possibilities exist regarding their characteristics. It may resemble Earth with a thin atmosphere, liquid water on its surface, and continents and land masses scattered across it. Alternatively, it could share similarities with Earth, but be wetter. Such a planet would possess a thin atmosphere and a surface entirely submerged in water without continents or land masses except beneath the aquatic veneer. On the other hand, it could be arid or scorching, with a thin or even absent atmosphere, a scarcity of water, and a solid rocky surface similar to Mars or Mercury. Some regions may be frozen and frigid, concealing an icy, water-containing surface beneath their atmosphere, if present, with the potential for a liquid subsurface ocean. There is also the possibility that planets will develop thickened atmospheres, possibly with clouds, due to volcanic gases and chemically produced compounds. These worlds, similar to Venus, are unlikely to have surface temperatures conducive to liquid water oceans. You might be curious about exoplanet K218b which lies at a similar distance from its parent star as Earth does from the Sun when it comes to temperature. Surprisingly, none of the suggested options accurately describes K218b. This exoplanet stands out as massive, gaseous, and more reminiscent of Neptune than Earth. K218b is about 2.6 times larger in radius than Earth and has a mass 8.6 times greater than Earth. Because of this, its density is less than half that of Earth, indicating the presence of a substantial envelope of volatile gases. To maintain a rocky surface beneath a relatively thin atmosphere, a planet should not exceed twice the mass of Earth and 1.3 times Earth's radius. Q18b surpasses both of these thresholds significantly. Larger, more massive planets, such as Neptune and Uranus, possess stronger gravitational forces, which allow them to retain lighter gases such as hydrogen and helium. In contrast, smaller, less massive planets like Earth don't have the gravitational pull to stop solar radiation from causing these atoms and molecules to escape. A recent study has demonstrated that any planet exceeding approximately 1.75 times Earth's radius must exhibit Neptune-like characteristics instead of Earth-like ones. Also, if a planet's atmosphere is made up of hydrogen and helium, it can make its surface pressures and temperatures thousands of times higher than Earth. As a result, K218b isn't a planet the size of Earth, surrounded by oceans, but rather a planet the size of Neptune. 
The James Webb Space Telescope has remarkable capabilities for studying planets like K218b. When the planet passes in front of its parent star from our perspective, some of the star's light goes through the planet's atmosphere. This allows us to look at its transmission spectrum and figure out which molecules leave their unique marks. During a transit event, JWST used both the NEAR ISS and NEAR SPEC instruments to capture the spectrum from 0.8 to 5.0 microns, which is a bigger range than what Hubble could see. The results show that what was thought to be a possible water signature by Hubble is actually methane and carbon dioxide, which are likely to be present in the planet's atmosphere. The authors of the study proposed the detection of this molecule. However, it is only a minor feature in the spectrum that suggests its presence. It is not possible to definitively confirm the existence of this gas due to the significant uncertainties in this remarkable data. A water-covered Earth-sized planet would be an interesting place to search for life, especially for signs of life processes occurring in ocean waters. However, it would be quite a leap to apply those same criteria to a gas giant planet like K218b. Why? you might ask? Well, the key reason is that we didn't detect any water on K218b. The new findings from JWST contradict the earlier statements, based on Hubble data, that suggested the presence of water or water vapor in K218b's atmosphere. What we now know is that the signal that was thought to be water was actually methane. This doesn't mean there is no water on K218b. There may be water in a lower layer of the atmosphere or deep below the volatile gases closer to the planet's surface. But we can say for sure that K218b is not the ocean-covered world that many thought it was. This is especially true in the upper atmosphere, where we can see water with our current tools. If the planet has a thick envelope of volatile gases, the chances of it being habitable are low. In fact, nearly all the so-called super-Earth planets that have had their transit spectrum studied have shown these characteristic volatile envelopes. This suggests that they are more similar to mini-Neptunes than super-Earths. The K218b also follows this pattern. However, there's another possibility. K218b might be a Hycean world, but it's not one like Earth. Let's say that the hydrogen in this exoplanet's atmosphere is a very thin layer and that there is a lot of water underneath it. Let's say that K218b has more water than any other planet in our solar system, even more than Jupiter and Saturn's moons with water. A study from 2020 suggests that a planet with a water-rich interior beneath a thin hydrogen atmosphere could produce carbon dioxide and methane in its upper atmosphere, if we do take this idea seriously. Surprisingly, these predictions match what JWST observed it is possible to consider that K218b is a mini-Neptune version of a water-rich Hycean world. Maybe there is a very unusual type of life on this planet. The JWST spectrum shows a faint presence of dimethyl sulfide, a substance that is known to be made in nature on Earth. Could this be happening here too? On Earth, we know that living things make dimethyl sulfide. We refer to it as a terrestrial biosignature, which means that when we spot it here, it suggests the existence of life. Most dimethyl sulfide on Earth is made by tiny organisms like phytoplankton and bacteria. It's a big part of the organic sulfur in our oceans. If we found dimethyl sulfide on another planet, it could mean that there might be life there. But did we actually detect dimethyl sulfide on exoplanet K218b? Sadly, the evidence is lacking when we claim detection in astronomy we have specific confidence levels to consider. We measure these in terms of their statistical significance. In both astrophysics and particle physics, a five sigma signal is considered the gold standard for discovery. When we look at more data, we often find that signals with lower sigma values, like three sigma or less, are just random changes in statistics. So there's hope for dimethyl sulfide as a biosignature, but we don't have that level of confidence with K218b's data. This is where we run into big problems with the interpretation of the JWST. Did we detect methane? Yes. That signature is strong enough to prove that K218b's atmosphere has it. It meets the 5 sigma standard. Did we detect carbon dioxide? 
we think there might be carbon dioxide in K218b's atmosphere because we have reached the three sigma level. This means it's probably more likely than not. And did we detect dimethyl sulfide? It's far too early to say. We can't rule it out because the detection significance is so low, and the evidence to support its existence is incredibly thin. If you were only one sigma sure that you could cross the street without getting run over, you would never choose to cross that street. In the same way, if you're only one sigma sure of your science results, you should ask for more and better data before you say you found something. Niku Madhusudan, an astronomer at the University of Cambridge and lead author of the paper announcing these results, explained, Our findings underscore the importance of considering diverse habitable environments in the search for life elsewhere. Traditionally, the search for life on exoplanets has focused primarily on smaller rocky planets, but the larger Hycean worlds are significantly more conducive to atmospheric observations. It's important to know that all of the claims about dimethyl sulfide and K218b as a Hycean world are connected to a single person, Niku Madhusudhan from Cambridge. The NASA release, the Cambridge release, and his past and current work all talk about the scenario of a thin hydrogen atmosphere with a water-rich surface below it, where dimethyl sulfide is made on K218. The claim is not incorrect, but independent confirmation is absolutely required. While we're certain K218b has methane in its atmosphere, and we strongly suspect it has carbon dioxide, there is only suggestive but not definitive evidence for dimethyl sulfide. If it's of biological origin, it means that there are a lot of phytoplankton or bacteria-like creatures on this planet, much more than we see in Earth's oceans. However, there is no evidence of water on K218b, and there is no detection of any biosignature. The model of K218b with a thin hydrogen atmosphere, a thick water ocean beneath it, and active biological processes producing dimethyl sulfide is still possible, but it's important to recognize that these ideas are based on limited data. The data supports the possibility that none of these assumptions are true. In the quest for extraterrestrial life, it is a significant challenge that many, including astronomy and astrobiology professionals, tend to jump to conclusions without sufficient evidence. We must exercise caution and credibility to reach accurate conclusions about whether we are alone in the universe. Until we do, the search for life remains. So what do you think? Is this enough proof to confirm biosignature on K218b? Does the planet actually have liquid water oceans? If not, what do you think is out there? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.